Well, it's another. Hold on. Let me get set. <laughs> the Yeti needs to settle. Let in. this Yeti settle in now. Come on. I'm like, okay, action. Okay. <laughs> well, it's another. It's another rendition of Sup After Hours. Sup After Dark. After Dark. This is a pre. This is a Thanksgiving Eve special. It really is. Um, I'm much more jazz than last time. Unlike last time, well, I don't like, have a FEMA tent in my living room. Yeah. And it was also like 1030 last time. It was it's a little really earlier. Late. It's a little earlier, but I was just like, I'm like, you're have, settled. I have more to give. Let's you just put lot. it that way. You were, you were limited with what you could expel and I expend. I was. And now you're, the holidays are coming. Yeah. It's feeling cozy in I'm LA. Um, I can already feel it's like emptied out a little, which I, know, I it's love. It's so nice when it does that. It's my favorite. This is the best kept secret of LA is to come during the holidays. Holidays and Coachella. Um, you'll never regret it. You, we, things guess, are, I'm, I'm being, um, uh, tortured somewhat by, and I need to get it off my chest a little bit. Say your truth. Sister. <laughs> Sister. Sisters, have you ever poshed and then had someone straight up harass you for a whole day over something you sold them? Because that's what's happening to me. Tell us. <sighs> is this post? Is this from the posh? No, thank you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. None okay. of my posh hashtag right, right, posh right. army are to blame. <laughs> I'm leaning my posh in, legion. I'm leaning into like just the ultimate chuggy cringeness of posh life. <laughs> but none of my posh army Mm-mm. bless them. Bless their hearts. They have nothing to do with this. This is remember that me talking about that straight f- that I sold a pair of Yeezys to? Sinister straight. A sinister straight who spent like eight hours nickel and diming me right, in right, offers right, right. over like he, $5. He tried to haggle with the master. He tried to haggle with the queen herself. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't know that the posh mafia is going to come for his ass. So what is he doing now? So he buys these Yeezys, which were brand new. They right. had the tags on them. I like... In a fit of mania, bought them on StockX for too much money. They came, they were really ugly. I tried them on and was like, I can never wear these. Right. They sat in my closet for ages. And then finally I listed them on Poshmark and then had to deal with like straight men making offers and just like f- me around with these Yeezys. So I wanted to get rid of them and I sold them to him for like under retail value, like right. gave him a deal. Right. He like it was like a whole thing. Right. They have the tags on them. They yeah. are brand new. Like all my pictures never are comprehensive. Worn They've never been worn outside. I literally tried them on and then put them back in the box. Right. And they sat in the box pristine and untouched. He messages me and this should have been my first. Well, the first red flag was his haggling. And then mm. the second one was like, as a collector, I need to make sure that these have never been worn. If you've ever even tried them on, you need to send pictures of the souls. And I was like. Dude, they're the exact shoes that you see in all the photos. There's literally a million photos in this listing. Those are what you bought. Those are what you're going to get. Like, chill. Yeah. He gets them. He reports me for the item not being as not as the described. And he submits photos to the in as part of his report. The tribunal. He's. To the posh tribunal, he submits photos of him pointing at the soles, and there's a literal speck of dust. There's literally like one on the soles, on the soles of a shoe, on the soles, he's on me- the soles. He's mentally ill. Mental. Where- mental. <laughs> mental doll. Mental. Can I ask where he lives. I can't say. Okay, okay. I can't risk my posh career right, right, right. for this. <laughs> But I have his ad. I have his address. Like I could, I could. When I saw these photos of his f- finger, it was a sick little nail pointing at a speck of dust on the soles, ah! on the soles of his shoe. <laughs> One is like there's nothing. He's pointing at what nothing. Color are the I was shoes? like, this man is s- schizophrenic. What They're co- like red, black, and blue. <laughs> They're literally so hate. They're hideous. But I was like, needed them out of my life. So I sold them for $225. You need to expel no, those I shoes. No, I know. I needed this, them gone. That is a chakra cleansing. <laughs> you need to 
That is, I'm so happy. That is why there was construction happening here is because of those shoes. I know, it was attracted horrible. Attracted darkness. They did. They brought so much They're darkness cursed. into my life. And so Wait, then, so, but he, he literally has his Karen, hand. Karen, look at this. <laughs> look at that. This is what he said. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong. It's a clean sole of a shoe. He's pointing at like an, a speck of dust. I don't even know. But he goes, I know his, his finger. I know. Fingies. His fingies are sick little piggy fingers. So then he goes. <laughs> don't say that. They don't, are. Don't say pig. What? They don't, are pig fingers. Me- no, take that out. What? I'm not taking that out. <laughs> okay, okay. They're not even fingers. They're f- hooves. <laughs> He's pointing with his cloved He's- pig hoof. at the- We can't. We can't. What? I'm not saying this person's name or anything anything about him. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Actually, he's terrorized me. He they said they're reviewing the case and I go, if you don't want the shoes, you can send them back for a refund. This is crazy. And I go, they're exactly as pictured in the listing. You had access to multiple photos that showed the bottom of the soles. And then I just said, like, you can just return that like i approved i'm like give them back to me i will sell them on the posh live people Mm -hmm. were asking (laughs) my sick laugh is like (laughs) it's sick i sound like a really no it's so good it makes me laugh more (laughs) when you get sick laugh i go local (laughs) then he goes what's your best price for these i could keep them for a discount Carrie, when I tell you... Oh, so he's scamming you back. No, I was so enraged, and I literally almost was like... (laughs) When I sent that refund text, I literally (laughs) typed out, you f***. And and then I deleted it. No! No, I know. And then I deleted it, and I just texted my friends and, like, raged to them and let the... But then this enraged me again. And I go, I already gave you a major discount, and I'm over-dealing with you. So you can... (laughs) Wait. Wait, so he was... was it's like the scammer. The no, scammer always is knocks n- twice. Like what the? F- what the? He's, f- he's grifting you back, being like, "Well, I'll buy them off you if you want to." I know he. I go. So you can either keep them and stick to the price you paid, or send them back and I'll refund you. I've never had someone on Poshmark take up so much time and energy. Make a decision and let me know. And he goes, "Yes, because it's my fault. You listed dirty shoes as brand new, never worn. I'm sorry, I can't see every detail in a picture. It must be my fault. Even after that, I'm still trying to work with you here. But hey, whatever you do, you." And I wrote, "Dirty shoes, get a grip." <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I said, "You either keep them for the price you paid, which was a great deal, by the way, or send them back. I'm done with you." <laughs> He goes, what would they be called then? They were certainly worn. Not sure why you'd rather continue to argue instead of working out a deal. I go, it actually is technically your fault because you had multiple photos of the shoes from every angle. So if you're worried about a literal speck of dust on the soles of your precious brand new Yeezys that you got for a fraction of the retail price after nickel and diming me in offers, you can send them back. I'm actually doing you a favor by even allowing you to return them. I will gladly take them back and resell them for more money, might I add, to someone else. He goes, so I should have assumed that you were a liar. Why would I need to worry about shoes being worn that were listed as never worn? You didn't allow anything. The item wasn't as described. Carrie, I'm telling you. Are you still? Is it still? Yeah, I go, the item was exactly as described and matched the photos, which is true. (laughs) There's no argument to be had. It's actually very simple, but I can spell it out for you again since you seem to have such a hard time wrapping your head around your options. Worrying, but ultimately a reading comprehension problem on your part, I guess. You have two choices. A, keep the shoes, or B, return them. He goes, oh, but you're missing the part where you lied about the condition of them. That's very convenient of you. Are you projecting your own issues on me with reading? I said, if you can... Wait, what? No, Kara, I'm telling you... This man will not stand the f- down. He did this in offers and now he's doing it in the messages. I said, if you continue to message me, I will report you for harassment. He goes, oh no, I'm so sorry that I'm trying to work out a deal with you and that you actually are the one harassing me and trying to insult me. But hey, I guess maybe just list your shoes correctly that time. Didn't know trying to buy things was harassment. Really don't care about your empty threats. 
I said, the only message I will accept moving forward is the one about your decision re-keeping the shoes or returning them. There will be no further discounts. You either keep the shoes as is or return them to me. That's all. <laughs> Did you say anything else? Yeah. Then he goes, I'll think about it. This pussy <laughs> is going to keep those <laughs> shoes because he got them for a good deal and he knows it. He Damn. goes, just low how sellers can't even take responsibility for their own actions. Yet I'm the problem because I trusted your word, but didn't zoom in on every detail. Oh my God. I literally typed out, go f- cry about it to your therapist, you little b-. And then I deleted that and it just didn't respond. You were like, Whoa. No, I'm literally like, I got don't, the Cyber Monday no, live. <laughs> I got the career on the No, you got the career on the line. You can't, you can't. Like, this is someone that does this is probably doing this to, like, multiple He's people. sick. I found his LinkedIn. Oh, I'm no. literally about to, like... Don't! I am literally, it was, like, about to f- email the CEO of his company and be like, why is your employee during a work day harassing a queer small business owner? A queer female small business a owner? A queer femme. <laughs> you? I was about to be like... Why is your employer, why is your employee spending crucial work hours harassing me, a third generation immigrant, (laughs) granddaughter of dairy farmers, queer female small business owner on the internet? It is like. I was about to take it up the woke chain and destroy him. But that sounds, (laughs) that sounds. I was like, I will click every box it takes to annihilate this person. That just to me feels like. I mean, I've never posh and I don't, nor I don't think I will, but I, I respect the hustle. Yeah. I do. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. And I respect it. I can't access it. But to me, <laughs> that, that sounds like, that sounds like someone that's doing that regularly. Definitely. So you're, you're probably like one of many that he's like trying to like, this is what people, I mean, people do this in life. They like, they get, they get, uh, they buy something and then they pretend it was like, and then they're like, ah, look at this piece of shit. Thing, you know what I mean and it's like it's just the way it's like America it's just the way it is it sucks though but also I'm dead at you going <laughs> <laughs> Poli- the only words I want to hear the only thing I want to hear only message I want to receive now is if you're either going to keep it or send it back that's all that's all Miranda <laughs> You went full Miranda Priest on his I ass. I did because I was like, I can't say anything. Like, I did wade into TBD waters with the reading comprehension dig, but I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> but I truly, I was about to go full on verbally abuse this person you and get can't. kicked off the platform. No. And, and you can't do that. No. And I think anytime you, anytime you, uh, I feel like anytime you, challenge a man's reading comprehension a man specifically i knew, I knew that that would hit him under the belt i knew because boys learn to read slower than girls and it's just like a it's a wound i think he must carry i really know if there's one thing i know it's how to emasculate a <laughs> straight man he was he was he shaking needed, in his little he had little booties on uh, he was going Woo. His little hooves were shaking. <laughs> Don't his boots. you? Can't. Why can't I say that? Are you saying like demonic hooves? What? Like, wait, wait. Where's like? I need to explore this line that you have with t- saying someone has a pig hand. <laughs> with calling someone's finger a pig finger. I just Why don't, can't you say no, that? No, I just. I, I don't want like this man to somehow hear this and be like, they were body shaming me. He would then have to admit that that's who is t- being talked about. It's true. And this could also. I'm just, I'm just, just trying. Be, I'm. I have. You but know what? is there I have, a specific? No, why I have. Pit? I have. I have like PTSD from Ms. Selena. Sonella. Oh, Jenkins. Well, this isn't like that. Okay, good. She was the look. She does not haggle and then try and scan no, people out least, of a pair of fucking shoes. Yeah. Um. No, but I'm truly. It's taken up. I was like about to go into cardiac arrest today. I was so filled with that's rage. stressful, but also like the way he's like, he won't back down. I know. It's like, and it's it, such that's a, that's such like, a like male. Man. It's very male to be like, oh, 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 I'm coming back for one more. No, napalm. you have to. It's like, it's spelled out for you just because you didn't get your way. You baby. B- you're going to whine at I'm me. De- I am. It's kind of camp. The finger is camp. The finger <laughs> pointing at absolutely nothing. I was like, <laughs> let me get my, I was get literally. Get the microscope. The, the, the f- 
Yeah, the Latoya Jackson not, with, the, with the magnifying glass. Not only is it camp that it's pointing at nothing, but it's extra camp that he, he would be mad about dust on the bottom of a shoe. Yeah, maybe that maybe that happened like mid transit. No, I mean I pro- it's like I it probably happened if, like if I tried them on there was a speck of dust right. that got on them, but it's literally like it's the bot the shoes touch the ground. It's the bottom of a shoe. Yeah. It's no like one's you're... going, <gasps> what's that under there? Is that dust on the bottom of your shoes? You're disgusting. Well, maybe he works in like, maybe he works in like um, the menu style setting where they come and they inspect their souls and inspect it, their... There's no, I'm, there's nothing. This man is truly, he was I just... need my Posh Mafia to go after. People love to argue. People they just... really do. I'm people not are, the one. People are the internet no matter where you are be it poshmark be it twitter for, or x formerly known as twitter people will argue the arguers are everywhere they will, so he of course this guy is gonna he's it's the holidays he's probably mad about something he got a good deal he got a great deal but he just wanted to just, he just wants to twist the knife or i also knew it would make him mad when i was like to give him back to me i'll sell him for more money which i would and so I'm using reverse psychology well, then, on this literal pea brain. But then he was like, okay, let's make a deal. Yeah. And I was like, there is no deal. There's the deal is you have two options. It's like, it's I'm very about, like, I, I'm also like, you're bold as f-. like, I was, <laughs> I like, when he's like, I'm not going to do this, but I was like, I'm ready to f- reroute my plane ticket and stand outside of this person's <laughs> house and show them what the f- happens when you f- with me on posh. <laughs> Can you imagine? I was like, you were going, seeing Daily you were about Mail to go headline. like, you're about no, to go I'm like full to astronaut woman. On this no, person. you're about to go like full diaper astronaut woman oh, driving, I'm driving. In the fucking you're front like, seat. plans get in Tony, <laughs> and then you drive. I go across the country. I drive literally across the country and stop at this man's house. Well, this is he'd po- probably actually kill me. <laughs> Yeah, I think, no, you're, he'd I for think sure. you're more likely. I'd be like fired up never, and then he uh, he would kill me. Yeah, you can't trust someone that's you can't go someone confront. that's down to clown with this kind of stuff. You, you don't want to fuck with man. them. So I think it's good to like get your little yayas out, as my mom would say. And get I had to get the yayas out on the pod. You had to get and but this then you put it to bed because someone like this, you don't know what they're capable of. If someone is if someone is willing to point to a a shoe and and <laughs> upload it to the, the tribunal. <laughs> they are not on a whatever day, Tuesday in the day before a holiday. They are not They're someone not you want right. to with. You don't want to with them. So you either you either wait till they send him back, or you block his ass and move on with oh, your life. He's getting blocked because to hell that and is some that is some energy that is. That I'm t- is, it's pig energy. No, that's just dark. That is just like dark it's, it internet dark. energy. Dark internet energy. <laughs> Karma weighs heavy on him. I know. Um, that's funny. I well, know. I'm glad that you. I'm glad that we can laugh about it. <laughs> I hit... just when you said this. Uh, well, yeah. But we need to talk about something far more pressing. So we're going to get into Salt Lake City. Wait, no, we're going to get into Mother God. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Lara's caught up on the two episodes of Love Has Won. Love has certainly not Love won. Love is winning. Alcoholism has won. <laughs> Pickled livers have won. Guys, the documentary... Of the, the century. The Softy Brothers produced it. And the music is so good. First of all, I need the soundtrack to come out. But it's on HBO Max. It's called Love Is One. It's about the mother's go- mother god cult. A few years ago, I think it was like during COVID, they found a mummified body of a woman in Denver in this like crappy house that all these people were living in. And she was surrounded by like Christmas lights on a bed. And she was wrapped in sleeping bags. And she was fully a mummy. Yeah. And she'd been there for a while. And the people were just like living in the house. They found out this is a cult. She's their leader. She has died of liver failure. And they've since displayed her body like she's Lenin. Placed her in like sleeping bags and created a tomb for her. Surrounded by like blinking Christmas lights. Because they were like, she's coming back. So this documentary explores. And it's 
interesting. This documentary is different because they're talking to the actual current members of the cult. You want to know what's crazy? When this story came out, I was obsessed with it, right. and they were still live streaming on YouTube, and I got on some of their live streams. You did? <laughs> yeah, because I was Damn. like, God, these people are cray-cray, and then I was like, I'm checking this out, and their live streams were sadly like incredibly mundane, but the Christmas lights were still up. They were still in that house when yeah, so- they were live streaming post her mummified body being found. So this this documentary, it's it's talk. There are a few former members, but it's mostly current members of this group, and they still kind of worship her in death, and she's still their like lead spiritual leader. Yeah, they love her, and it's like a hodgepodge of like different Eastern like spiritualities, white woman co- appropriating like other cultures kind of thing. But it's this woman, Amy Carlson, who was just this like kind of someone that wanted to be famous and then like went on like a rough road and kind of lost her way and then found internet spirituality and married this. So well, she found weed. Well, she found ecstasy and weed. Mm -hmm. She found MDMA. This is like what I would have become if I'd never gone to therapeutic boarding school. <laughs> you <stayed in> Oklahoma. <laughs> Either dead from fentanyl or an opioid or mother God. She, the first guy that she, she shacks was from up Kansas. with? I know. I was like, this reeks of Kansas to me. She was also like gorgeous. Yeah, she was stunning. But she shacks up with this guy that she met. She talked to him for like a second. She was like, we must meet. And they, she was on clearly on like drugs. And they lived together for years. And they, they began live streaming together. And he was like this crusty old dude who lived in Crestone, Colorado and like the prairie. And they just like they live. lived in like an adobe house. It kind of looked. Cool. It looked really cool. And they just like lived together and like th- they live streamed. They called each other mother and father god. And then she kind of started. It's only a one woman show. Well, she was like, honestly, kind of a front runner of like open relationships, and I would argue a feminist icon. Her approach to dating was very advanced and cool and i think that single ladies out there and men should approach men seeking men should approach dating the way that mother god did she was the original polly but she would like find a man who was sexy or who she thought was sexy and be like you're the next father like are you ready to like take on this role and he was like and they'd be like sure and she'd be like you're incredible you're amazing there's never been anyone like you you're singular you're father god and i'm mother god are you ready for this responsibility and like seduce them into her world and she would just like vet them and then when she was kind of sick of their ass she'd be like well there's another father there's another father god waiting in the wings i had a dream about him and he's here and let's accept him too and like she just got these men like lined them the up so she started doing like internet spiritual like tarot readings and like spiritual cleansing over the like again like almost like an early like like twin flame like everything was done via internet and then she started amassing a following online and then slowly people started coming out to live with her and she got like a business manager basically and she had uh her first father replacement father god this like young hot guy from the east coast like left yeah he was like he's like i'm tired of her shit. she's a drunk <laughs> <laughs> he was too buttoned up you have to be like extremely wook vibes to get into mother god and like the shit that they were on it's I my was like, hell this these is my... are the people that go to like grateful dead concerts they all live in this house up in like mount shasta in california and they just like there's like 20 of them and they're all like super like white people with dreadlocks vibes and they just live stream 24 hours a day which i'm like honestly is for cults as far as Smart. cults go i respect that they're just like fully transparent it's not clandestine like when Mother God's raging, you hear her in the background <laughs> going, Shut up! Loves it. The way I knew she was like fully legit, like bonkers, is when you see her with a necklace on her head. <laughs> when you see that pendant necklace come well, out she's and that puts a necklace on her head, she is. She's, she's 
blam. She's a beer. She's like a beer drunk. Like she's like she drinks. She's a wine and she's taking like bong rips. She's just she's, she's just fucking. This is a, this is a show about like if you've never if you've ever thought like weed. This is a show that the power the true dark power of weed. This is how I partied in high school. Like she, these were like the level we weren't spiritual, but like this is how we raged. It would a, be like everyone sitting around getting up on weed and then just like getting faced well basically the cult. Goes, ha, ha, ha. like every time she laughs her laughter remember when she she's got a out, ciggy laugh at the computer and she goes wah, 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 and then like sits she's just like, here she's surrounded by these people and they're all they're all so high and drunk and they're all just giggling and she, yeah she goes ha, <laughs> you know, and she's like, and like go, this guy comes and he's this they, one replacement father, the new father God arrives and he goes, I I went in the room and I looked around and in the crowd I, I heard the most beautiful voice and just <laughs> go, ah, and she's like, he's like, and then I saw her and I knew she was Mother God. Her laugh <laughs> killed me out of nowhere. She'd be playing like dub sap and be like, and then she go. <laughs> Ah, She's like unwell, <laughs> fully unwell. I She's love the, like, the women that, of course, they have like a f- New Zealand lady. Of course, it wouldn't be complete without her in the mix. And she's like, her energy was. <laughs> she, she was taking on so much energy, and it's like she's lotto right now yeah, they're she's like, not even they're gonna like, remember you see, this. she's crying because she's there's so many new people and they're they're all she, she's giving so much of her energy and i'm like no she's bugging out because she's on weed <laughs> and all these random <laughs> people <laughs> just came into her like house. 50 fat bong rips in a row and like chugged wine and then she's there's stressed. babies here and she's like whoa what the f-? no and this that woman who brings her kids that woman is a she is one I of want the a movie darkness. about her. She's one of the most incredible she's women I've so ever seen. Terrifying. This one woman's like she's yeah. slender she goes, woman. She goes, I, I packed up my kids and me, and we drove there. She brings three of her kids under the age of like five to live with Mother God, and Mother God, ah, ha, ha, the kids are all crying, and I'm like, oh my god. And then thankfully, that her mom came and extracted that well then the backstory okay i really do think that that woman has been through a lot of abuse though no i think the she was way abused that as she, a child. Like, she was but then i think she was probably in like an incredibly abusive no marriage. i'm like this is better the way that she cried when she got like if you're crying with like joy and relief upon entering mother god's house of horrors I'm like you've been through it i'm like this is better this is a better situation for her but then the real shocker was her going well, about a month in, my parents, they showed up and took my kids. She, said, it's, she goes, and it's, it's honestly... It's been years. And then she, goes, she and I don't think... She goes, it's not really a sacrifice. That's not how I look at it. How about when, when she... you're this close to Mother God. How about when she burned the house down? She's... A, she might actually be Mother God. <laughs> she's serving like she's low actually key cunt on mother, the side. She's Mother Slay. Mother God. I'm sorry. I don't. If you have to call yourself Mother, you're not Mother. No. And I'm having a hard time seeing what these people saw in Mother God. I see more Mother in this in oh, this, she, this firecracker. I'm sorry, but when you burn a house down, you're officially Mother. <laughs> There's a new Mother in town, and it's Slender Lady. She's and then all these <laughs> women going, come. She goes, Everyone goes, we moved to Oregon. We got a house. It was f-ing great. Mother God's like, <laughs> and then they go. And then one day, that house burned the f- down. <laughs> and then she goes, she goes, and I, I was burning some I was sage. Outside, burning a little sage. And then. It was a brush fire. It just lit up. And then I mean, she goes, and then they escaped. She, they no, escaped goes, by boat. No, she goes, and I went to Mother God, and I said, <laughs> Mother God, it was me. And she goes, I know, bitch. Ah! <laughs> Mother God, she's. Mother God is she, kind of Erica Jane. She's <laughs> dope for that. For giving. I know, bitch. Don't worry. She's, I know. She's listening. I know. I downloaded that information. <laughs> she's like a fucking. <laughs> She, it's really sad because this woman 
This woman, you see her, she also has three. She's also talking about nothing. She they're all has, talking about nothing. No, and they're up for, they stay up for seven days at a time just at the foot of her bed. She's always in bed. She's like, she's like <laughs> Proust in bed, just never leaving her bed. And With her, that ex-con guy was so <laughs> hot. I, I was glad that she got <laughs> down by a true psychotic hottie before she bit the dust. <laughs> But this, you see this woman's descent into full alcoholic fit, like alcoholic, true, the, the depravity, <laughs> the heart of darkness, alcoholism. She this woman's like liver fails. Mitt a and, she, and this woman, <laughs> it's really sad. No, She's, but the best too. She, she also is drinking so much. Colloidal silver. Co- colloidal silver. Her skin is literally. Blue. Blue. This woman, and that's why she looks blue as a mummy. Well, I think sometimes you just blew out as a mummy. Oh, okay. But also that. But she, this but, woman, you see her, she went from like this like very beautiful like. She's like, a stunning like va va And she had three kids of her own and she, oh, and then that backstory, the her mom and sister, their mother, their queen, but she, uh, they said they went to, they went for out for a birthday dinner and she just was like, gotta go and left and never came home and they never saw her again. That's honestly a sleigh move. <laughs> She packed her and they came home. She no, literally out. they like went to <clears throat> Olive Garden for just a regular old dinner. And she got up from the table and was like, gotta go to the bathroom. Goodbye. And then they never heard from her again. That's brilliant. That's cool. <laughs> Mother God. And then, but my favorite too, where I was like, this is literally me is when every, like they sit by her bed and one of her followers will just like record every like move she makes it she'll be like mother god sneezed three times and seven times and two times mother and god she, it's her job beer. to like into it what mother god wants to yeah. eat and so and then they have to like bring it to her and if mother god does not like the food that they made she will flip the f- out she's like you got me chicken palm she says what i wanted was chicken f- palm you piece of f- and they, you hear it's them basically and they're live streaming this entire thing by the way and you hear them like go in like crying to the main room and they're like so mother god is kind of freaking out right now but that's just because like she has a lot of energy moving through her but i was like this is literally me when like postmates forgets that my side well, of sauce no but this is it's it's like a it's very like the the, the bear christmas episode it's it's literally <laughs> just like it's an alcoholic family. Yeah. Where everything revolves around the alcoholic person. Well, they all want to get f***ed up. No, they, and they no, but I'm saying like they're it's like a dysfunctional alcoholic system where it's like the center of the family is like the identif- you know, the patient and they're everything's about them. Mm-hmm. And like they're all like Al-Anon and addicts and it's wild. And the craziest thing is she kind of at the end was like I'm not mother god, take me to my mom. <laughs> yeah, that was f- Nuts. She was like, I want to see my mom. And then they were like, No, Mother God, you must drink, you have to drink more colloidal <laughs> silver. That's when the Posh Mafia turned. And they were like, they were when like the Posh qu- Squad. <laughs> when you try and tell your Posh Squad that you're not Mother God, and they're like, Silly Mother God, yes, you are. No, and and they're like going in a fit of like delirium tremens, being like literate late stage liver failure, retching bile, being like what if I'm not Mother God? Ugh! What if I made it all up? And they're like, and, oh, Mother God. Oh, that's Mother just... God, we got to get to Hawaii. And she goes, she goes, I just want, she's like, if you were in this position, like you'd want to see your mom too. And I'm like, that was really sad. And also like, you. She, she... was trying to make right with God. Yeah, because she knew she was. But her posh army said. Uh-oh. They said, <laughs> no, no, we're <laughs> taking you to no Kauai. Kauai. Wait, I'm also really obsessed with their obsession with Robin Williams. Oh yeah, her, her she has Galactics, which are her like spirit guides. It's Carrie Fisher, Robin Williams, Trump. Um, but Robin is the main one. Robin is always channeling. Robin's com- always telling her thing. Robin's she's like, like, Robin said she wants to eat mac and cheese today. And they're like, and then when she's raging, they go, Robin's really upset. Robin, Robin runs a tight ship. There's a scene of them literally one girl's like vaping on a weed pin, and they're all watching Mrs. Doubtfire. I know. And then there's this one where they're like, 
mother might die to like she might be they're basically like a ufo is going to come suck mother up from her body and take her to like the celestial heavens and they think clouds are ufos and they're just all going there they are they're <laughs> that here. was kind of you coded though it was. <laughs> i was like that's carrie vibes it was always thinking some clouds are out UFOs. it was like very it was very uh she was, there nope. they are say hi to them hi. say hi oh my god look at them anyway everyone should be watching this doc i'm uh, Truly dead. What would her housewife tagline be? Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's no tagline. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like that kind of person you've met at like a weird thing where you're like, I'm not supposed to be here, and there's always like one person like that. That's oh, just I've like... met so many of these types of people. <laughs> like true, like acid weed head. Like this is if you go to any. Grateful Dead show. This is accounts for like about 30%, 30 to 40% of the audience in attendance. And if you dive into like Grateful Dead cover band audiences, like I've gotten in someone's like school bus before. Whoa. Like I've, I've touched, I've touched mother God adjacent vibes. Yeah, that's hardcore. It truly like they've done just so much acid their brains are i i believe that they believe in oh no they're what's just going on they're so high they're, they're permanently just truly perma fried they're ba- they're brain dead and they have like there's no real rhyme or reason or doctrine like they're the kind of f-ed up which is a favorite breed of f-ed up for me to like watch from afar like on tv yeah. they remind me of uh, I think it was like Chrissy or Christina from Intervention, the meth head who oh, drank yeah. vodka and would write math equations and notebooks. It's just nothing. And like scribble on the wall. I was like, there's one scene of a guy like reading a doctrine to people. And it's like, where'd you get this? They literally just like trip acid and write like doctrine. They don't, they're manifesto vibes. There's just no rhyme or but reason. But it's just drug talk. It's just, it's nothingness. If you do, like you do enough ketamine and you too can be yeah. mother god. I've been it. <laughs> let's speak about <laughs> let's speak about another mother god. I'm mother and I'm father and you're listening to sexy, sexy unique, unique mother god. Salty, Salty Utah, Utah mother gods. <laughs> um this episode was, got good at the end but I was a little like we were chatting it up during this episode. I know I want to like <laughs> to the end. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Well, we have to talk about, I have like broad strokes. So we have to talk about Monica's like daughter forced scene with her daughter. I want the best for her daughter. Me too. I want her to thrive. And I don't know if like her mom forcing her to shoot scenes of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is where she's going to spread her wings and fly. I think her daughter has the potential to serve cunt. Her daughter has the potential to be a mother god. She's mother god. She in might, that blanket on the couch? She'll she'll like blossom into like her she'll come into her own like personhood. Yeah. Whatever that is. I'm just I'm just thinking about Mother God and I her know. Um, she she's just like Monica's like, I wanna show you I wanna help you get ready for prom. Do you have your dress yet? And she goes, I was prom queen. Wanna see all my pics? And then she drags out her photo books and is going through them. And then Monica reveals that her oldest daughter's dad is not the dad that Monica was married to. It was like she actually was with this other guy. And one time she left her daughter at the house and she looked down and the daughter was playing with something. And when she looked at it, it was a bag of oxy. So she was like, I picked her up and got the f*** out. Monica pulled the Mother God special. So that was good. That was good, Mother God. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's But her dark. ex adopted her daughter. So he adopted he's her father God born, now. So he's Father God. But she's basically like, I want you to know your who your biological father was. And like, I'm my mom, when my gay dad left me and my mom for his boyfriend in like Tampa or whatever, like my mom burned all his photos. Oh my god, I forgot her dad was gay. Yeah, which makes so much sense. And she ne- is she connected with him? No. We need this we need Monica's gay dad oh, on Rolsick tonight. Stat. stat. So LD like torched all photos. Wait, or- that makes LD is the ultimate fag hag. To- truly. It makes so much sense. This is that she's what happens when you get married to a gay man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this I forgot about this like key element. You either go the Angie route or you go LD. 
LD's a slay for that. She can actually do no wrong now that I know this. <laughs> but she, so she's like, I want you to know who your dad really was. So like, I'm not going to like pretend he didn't exist. Like my mom did for me. She mm-hmm. always taking a moment to LD. <clears throat> I love being like, I want you to know who your dad was. And then minutes later on a national television show, tell a traumatizing core memory story about how your dad just left you to play with a bag of oxy. Yeah, that's really great. I mean, like, thank you so much for sharing that. That's going to make my teen years Amazing. exponentially better. Sean and Monica, Sean and Monica, Seanica. Sean and Angie get, oh, yeah. go to finally go on a date. Eating some charcuterie and veggie with hummus things. I was like, God, enough with the Greek food. I was like, every, everyone in it. LA, everyone in SLC is like gassy because they're all eating charcuterie <laughs> every day, which Monica, I'm, like, I'm happy with doing that. I would love that. Except there was one charcuterie plate that had big cubes of sausage and they were too big it was like soil and green they were like this thick <clears throat> they were like That's big right. square cubes it was, was ungodly angie k does one of my favorite things that a woman can do in a relationship which is like pick a fight out of nowhere mm-hmm. based on a concept that you brought to the table <laughs> <laughs> she goes God, your music is so annoying. Like, you play country music all the time. You didn't used to be like that. And your music is hella annoying. And then he's like, well, I sometimes, I think your music is kind of annoying. And then she starts crying. She goes, see, that's the thing. It's like, I don't want to be annoying to my husband. And it's like, you said this first. Yeah, he goes, I've always listened to country. And she's like, well, I don't like it. And he's basically like, He's like, okay, well... He's like, well, how do we... She's like, I feel like you don't know me anymore and I feel like you don't, like, see me as desirable or, like, that I'm... And she's like, and he's like, like I don't honey, know... honey, in that shirt, no one does. <laughs> I know. She was wearing, like, a chrome shirt. Chrome shirt. Um, but I was, like, kind of confused. When he's like, I don't know what we can do to reconnect. I'm like, just... Yeah. Just go Stick out. Stick your go out penis in, the car in her vagina. And eat give her, her some out. roadhead and then eat her out. or Or vice versa. Yeah, just go, go 69 in the car. You know what, actually? Just go get like a nice hotel room. Isn't there four seasons Have in Have an Utah? affair with each other. Go to Park City, check yeah. into the Ritz, and then go down on her and stick a finger in her butt. I'm just like, I'm, I know it's like they have they need like a plot line, but I'm just kind of like, I'm always, why? Are, uh, whenever I see a couple doing this, I'm like, why are you doing this? Yeah, it's not. This is just not, it's messy. Mm-hmm. Just pretend that you're happy at least. You're gonna regret. Or like really sell this dysfunction. But just I'm no, I'm just like you're gonna regret this. If you're not gonna get a divorce, don't bring your spouse onto a show and like pick fights with them. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's my If you're gonna hot do take. it, you better really go all in. <clears throat> um Lisa. <laughs> Heather. Rolls. Oh. Heather unleashes a feast of Wendy's in anticipation of her house guest, a one Lisa Barlow. And Lisa drives her Porsche up to Heather's front door, running over a rock on the way. And she goes, what did I hit? What did I hit? She steps out in her neon green stilettos and her little neon green. What kind of bag is that? A little clutch. A little clutch. And she goes, oh, she goes, dang it. I have to tell John. We have to call John right now. Heather. And it's really up her it's Porsche. Up. It's like hanging off. That's gonna be like a thousand dollars. Because Heather, you have to get that. I need. He, she's like, I need to get that boulder removed. She's like, Yeah, you need to do that stat. Do it right now. Do it right now. The oh, the Wendy's look really good. You know what I miss is dipping a Wendy's chicken nugget into a frosty. Oh and yeah. Eating it. Why I did is that love- the only restaurant you can do that with, and it tastes good? It's like savory and sweet. I used Any to love, other restaurant? No. I used to love getting high and going to Wendy's in New, Jer- in New Jersey. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> I think the last time I went to Wendy's, I was high. Well, that, the last I go to when Simon. Sometimes when Simon's out of town, I drive to a parking lot and I eat Wendy's. Oh, yeah. You have your like it's my little solo secret. Wendy's. <laughs> my sexy secret. <laughs> I park my strange in this, addiction. On Sunset Boulevard. I just eat in the parking lot. <laughs> I love it. I haven't really done. I can't really do that now with Mango. Why? When you get him on the action, get him in your sick 
<laughs> that poor guy. I know. He's, he's so, doing better, though. He's doing better. He's still coughing a lot. It just takes a long time. I was literally telling Carrie earlier tonight, like, Tony just stopped having his symptoms. It is crazy that we talked about this mystery illness, and now it's like... It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's like, now... It's, Trendsetters once again. No, I'm just saying, like, it's crazy how fast this kind of shit happens. I know. It's like, now, like, the Washington Post is writing about it, so... Yeah. Um, not that they're <laughs> reputable. Or Bezos anything. is listening. Um, Lisa is schnibbing on no napkin, just dipping from a plate. I'm like, God, she, how does she do it? Heather, in Her a flashback, fingies. had planned. She and Monica are planning a big old trip to the Bermudas, the Bahamas. The Bermuda. Bermuda. <laughs> Bermuda, and Monica's grandmother was born there, so she has like a lot of familial ties so and then heather told monica like in order to have this trip you have to apologize to lisa and she's gonna broker peace between two women lisa's like okay um whitney and angie meet for a power this i was like a little like glazed over in the scene but basically they go and whitney has girl from plainville eyebrows like <laughs> We need got an eyebrow dye job that is uh, shocking, but I'm like, you know what? I, it's kind of crucial, and I accept this new wild rose. And she looks like Gaga on the Edge of Glory video, in a Versace, some kind of Versace homage. And my <laughs> biggest takeaway from this lunch is that they were eating sandwiches with forks. I've done that, but like, just picked at a sandwich mm -hmm. was. That's a eating disorder thing. Mm -hmm. I had just clocked their asses. I said, these ladies are not. Yeah. But they're just both. And again, they're doing it too. I'm like, why are you doing it? She's like continuing to complain about Sean. And then Whitney's like, yes, I agree. Justin is this. I have the same issue with him. She we went, we went up to Claridge's like, Eating in bed and breakfast. I don't know. Somewhere up in like St. George. And they went on was, a little vacation. They went on a little like fuck trip and they got to the hotel and she goes, and I literally was like, Justin, do you even want to be in this anymore? And he went, I don't know. Do you? And she went, I don't know. She goes, I kept telling him it's not normal to be monogamous and married. I was like, we know you think that. You and, literally had an affair with this man. I know. And Angie <laughs> goes, I know. We're both animal. We're all animals and animals can't really. I'm like, what is happening? And I feel like the only animals that really are monogamous are ducks. Did you know about that? And I was like, are you just saying this? Cause are you saying this? Cause your husband's a, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and she goes, Why? she, and Whitney goes, can I ask you something? When is the last time you had sex? And she's like, we have to schedule it for just once a week. And she goes, don't organize it. Just do it. <laughs> marriage coach she's a sex coach um meredith is and seth are setting up their podcast and there was a moment where i was like she is lisa vanderpump i know it was freaky and they're she having was like lisa vanderpump from like season three of real housewives of beverly hills they're getting out the charcuterie they're getting out the snacks they're pouring some merlot some drinks and they're about to record their podcast but it feels like they're about to engage in a kind of foursome swinger activity and then it's revealed that L whitney and justin have been invited over for Lo an episode and of hanging by a thread <laughs> and it is very it did feel like they were like swingers and like they're coming over and it's exciting and like meredith and seth are like the older couple <clears throat> i'm just like why stop podcasting stop. just stop pretending enough please don't add it to the mix we've been through enough i'd like them to stop pretending I swear to God, they're not even recording anything in this episode. Yeah, I was like, where are these mics plugged in? To? Yeah, they're just plugged. Like, they're just the, they looked like they were just running off the table. I'm sure there's like a producer in the background, yeah. but I was like, they just ran these mics off the edge of a table and are like pretending to podcast. It's like, what was that meme of the guy who tried to like pretend he was in the hospital to get out of going <laughs> to class or something and he had AirPods in his nose and was pretending to be like on life support and it was a phone charger. <laughs> I like that. That's what they were doing. That's what they're moment. doing. And they just talk about like, Meredith goes, part of what we do here, <laughs> part of what we do here is entertain interesting couples and relationships that we're fascinated by. We found yours fascinating, not because we think you're hanging on by a thread, but because you intrigue us. She goes, 
Where is the craziest place you've had sex? And Whitney goes, well, it was probably when I sucked Justin's <laughs> under his desk while I worked for him. And then the HR lady came in. You sucked him off in front of HR? And then, no wonder he got fired. And then Meredith and Seth are like, whoa. I'm like, damn, is that legal? And then it goes to... Her you can't have Whitney and Justin anywhere. Like, no. imagine them in a corporate environment. The wild rose under a desk. Just like... <laughs> that's like fully porn like i've watched a gay porn she is the wild rose for that an hr I love walked it. in not in front of myself it's very like not what's of- what's going on here she's justin i need to talk to you about the the recent meetings and whitney's like <laughs> he's like just a second he's like uh yeah <laughs> um it's that's like okay yeah that, doesn't that feel farcical almost it's like a fairly brothers it comedy <laughs> whitney is kind of like Her a fairly like, brothers uh, 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 and then the door <laughs> opens and she's just frozen with his <laughs> down her throat she's she just like, her head and he is <laughs> it is. she's just, just stop and <laughs> freeze she goes <laughs> she can't even breathe because she'll choke he's holding her head down and meanwhile he's like oh yeah uh <laughs> the meetings <laughs> it's like 90s he's it's like, like a, a really bad yeah, it's comedy. very it's, it's like very it's something 90s. about mary it's very he's just like a oh it's a scary movie ooh, yeah he's like ooh, she's like i need your signature <laughs> ah, that face. That face. <laughs> i need your signature on some of these documents and he's like <laughs> oh, and she's like is everything okay and he's like is everything okay there justin no she's like this like kind of marm like like joy kill and like misogynistic 90s like yeah the like fucking a- this <laughs> from <HR. Just> <laughs> and what's going on there justin <laughs> we just had that floor recarpeted and he's like oh yeah, there's like a pile of like <laughs> Whitney. All, no, I imagine also the desk has like a little bit of a slit underneath. So in order to truly not be seen, Whitney had to like push her feet and like be up. Like so. Oh, a d- and she's fully like Mission Impossible style under the desk. He like. <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> on that face. That's sick. And then, like, and then, truly, at the end, it's like a. Yeah. Well, she sees. I think the from HR sees like a What's big going- pile of saliva, like right under his chair, and that's when she's like, "We just had these floors clean. Watch where you're." Yeah, he's like, "Stop spilling. You spill water so much in here. God, it's it, a- it creates mildew. Oh, spilling Sprite and Mountain Dew all over the place." She's like, oh, "Well, if <laughs> she's like." Well, if I'm going to be here anyway, I should probably get some. And then she gets some water and from the carpet and then drinks. Oh, there definitely yeah. has to be like a, a sick out moment. Can I have a glass? And he's like, uh, she's like, yeah, right there. Whatever that stuff is. And he holds up a glass of and she goes, oh, yeah, he I'm will, parched. She ha- he has like, because he can't. Whitney's like, I don't swallow. And like, so he's always like coming. They, we, we establish it for yeah, earlier yeah, in yeah, the movie yeah. that he always like comes in like a soda cup that he leaves on his desk. And it's like a sick reminder yeah. of their little affair. And that's when the from HR is like, give me a sip of that. I'm parched and, and she like, drinks it she goes oh, that was good yeah she loves it she's like put that down on the inventory we need that kind of, we need we need some more coolers <laughs> of this is that sprite zero yeah bring I it in it. is that like a, a it caffeine free it tastes like it's caffeine free and he's like oh. he's like <laughs> <laughs> whitney's turning blue under the desk like spider-man <laughs> And then finally, HR goes out and Whitney goes, <laughs> and, then, and then it just explodes in the office. Yeah. And the shades and everyone in the office looks over. <laughs> it explodes on the desk. She actually has been just like gurgling his yeah. cum out. He's been coming actually this whole time. He started <laughs> her throat when the HR lady oh came God. in and she just sucked and sucked and <laughs> so hard. Yeah, I guess he, I swallow she, now emptied him <laughs> and then when he pulls out it goes she goes 
and like spits it all over the floor because <laughs> she doesn't swallow. I told you I didn't swallow. Oh man. <laughs> well, if that doesn't get us fucked. I know. YouTube, I don't know what will. Oh my god. We just end there. Um, we can't. We have like one more scene. Well, they, Heather arranges like a to announce the Bermuda trip. Heather is arranged because she's still on this bad Mormon two kick. We also just side note forgot about the hardest time in Justin's marriage is when Whitney held his dad's hand when he crossed over to the other side. Mm-hmm. She's like he couldn't do it. I thought she was gonna be like he was a pussy. Yeah, I was like, what? He was Where are like, you going with this? Yeah. So Heather arranges this Mormon like pioneer lunch at this like farm stand farm stand and she's gonna tell the girls about the Bruno trip but also like continue her never-ending obsession with the mormon church and she's like it's a spring day the mormon church was founded on april 6 1830 and i was like damn you really you're really spitting facts and then i had a moment because they all come they all wear bonnets and they're they're making like heavy cream and they look butter. really good in bonnets they all look most really, of them i'd say meredith and lisa look lisa looks phenomenal, phenomenal in a bonnet, in a bonnet. And I had this moment where I was like, is Heather like a Mormon psyop? Explain. Like she's not, she's out of the church, but she's still like espousing propaganda in a way. Like this was like, she's talking about the history of the church and like the values and like blah, blah, blah. And it's like our ancestors, this is our heritage. And like, it's very like, it's very, I mean, this, I don't actually think it is, but in my, consp- my like tinfoil hat is like, she's a psyop. They're like, go on and try to convert like gays and like women. Maybe her next book is going to be called Cool Mormon. Cool Mormon. And she is kind of a, like, this is like kind of like propaganda a little bit. Not no. I Black, like where your head's at. Black Phillip is there. There's lots of sheep and goats. Mm-hmm. The goats know. Mm-hmm. They, she's like, okay, for our first thing, we're going to do uh, our hobby. We're going to churn butter. And I was like, oh my God, I'm excited. Because I thought they were going to churn butter in like a barrel. Yeah. And then, no. They, she pours heavy cream into like mason jars and says everyone shake it up. And some salt. And then they just spend like hours like, what is shaking. that shake weight thing? It's like yeah. they're just shaking mason jars. I was like, this is boring. And, and then they she, make little dolls. I like the dolls. <laughs> um, Meredith goes, this is my pink pioneer. And then, Of course, we, she's wearing some ice. Of course, she's wearing ice. And a then, little ice stout. And then Lisa goes, this is Trina the Trekker. I like Trina. And then Monica goes, this is my, this is Molly. And she's wearing a scarlet letter. Because she's been cast aside as the black sheep of the group. And she's like looking at Lisa. And then she goes, but the Mormon (coughs) religion is all about letting the black sheep come back. And I was like, categorically, no, it's not. No, it's about. It's about literally excommunicating whores. (laughs) (laughs) That's them. Their words, not mine. Yeah. And then so Lisa's like already, Lisa's ignoring Monica this whole time. And that's just like getting right under her skin. And this is supposed to be a a moment of forgiveness and like coming to terms with each other. But Monica just can't help herself. No, this is supposed to be like a Helen moment where they all churn butter and make dolls before they go to Bermuda. I was held by the food. I wanted that food. Mm -hmm. They've got ribs, they have cornbread, they have mac and cheese. This food is like, this food's very Southern, but it's also very like Oklahoma. Like if you go out, this is an Oklahoma food. And they're calling it Mormon food. Yeah, and I was like, no, babe, that's OKC style. And they're all eating, and it looks really good. And then uh, Heather goes, okay, so we're going to do one more game. Imagine that you're all, we're all on the Pioneer Trail together in covered wagons, and we hit a freak squall in an early snowstorm, and we have to empty our wagons. It's too heavy to go on, and we have to kick one of us out. Who would you pick? And Lisa, then Lisa, you go first. Lisa immediately goes, well, I would pick the woman who doesn't like other women and puts them down and is really nasty. So I'd pick Monica. Monica, you're unfortunately out. And then, of course, Monica can't help it. You just cannot tell her a goddamn thing. So she starts, she goes, oh, you just can't help it. And she starts mocking Lisa and she goes, 
Lisa goes, wow, you love my voice so much. You like to use it all the time. And she goes, I don't even think that is your voice. I was like, how dare you? How dare you? This is her smoky Long Island voice. Yeah. How dare you? Her monotone, gorgeous, silky voice. She goes, it is my voice. It actually is my voice. And she goes, you're the one that was comparing your mom to Ted Bundy. I just thought that wasn't right. And then Monica was like, you told me that no one would want to be my mom ever. And I was like, she certainly did. And that was funny. She She shut your ass down with that remark. And it was good. And she goes, you're the one that's like, my mom eats people. She's Ted Bundy. And then then Whitney goes, wait a minute. I am no (laughs) true crime buff, but I know for a fact that that's Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm like, what is with all the serial killer talk? I'm pretty sure it was Jeffrey Dahmer who was the eater of people. Meanwhile, while they're all starting to fight, Meredith is just like still churning her butter. She's like, I told my kids they should always commit to something and never quit. So I'm going to keep following through on this churning. And then Monica yaps away at Lisa. She calls her a nasty, ugly in the inside out. She's Brandy Glanville energy where she just goes too low and is like... And like unpredictable. Like you can't bring her anywhere. Yeah. And if you give her an inch, she's going to like... She's a liability. You say one thing to her and she'll escalate it. Yeah. She's like, I'll your family. You know? Yeah. She's like, you're a... You're like, oh my God. I just said I'd kick you out of a wagon. And it's everyone's getting up and then Angie goes, Hold! And she throws a glass and she goes, everyone be silent. And I was like, that's so Greek. I love it. She's basically like, shut up. Sons of <laughs> Sons of <laughs> And then she says something. I can't remember what she said. And Heather's then Monica, basically goes, like, Monica goes to go pout over by like a barrel. And Heather's like, what the f*** are you doing? Like, this is our announcement of this amazing, like, pilgrimage back home that you're taking to Bermuda to show us this is your home turf and for us to get to know you not fight with Lisa. You're supposed to be like making up with Lisa. And Monica's like, like, I'm not going. I'm not going. And I was like, you literally are LD. Worse, I would argue. And then Lisa comes over and she goes, okay, I'll be the adult in the room and I'll broker peace. She goes, Monica. I apologize for what I said. I never saw your mother be mean to you, but that doesn't mean I don't believe your words and I apologize. And then Monica goes, I'm sorry I called you ugly, which I'm like, shut up. Don't, and if you're, if you're that, not, if that's sorry. an insult, don't repeat the insult. No, she's borderline. <laughs> she is. And then they textbook, s- her and, and LD. And they sit down like and have mother like daughter. Yeah, she sounds like her sometimes. Like the- she is. Her going from like, loving something to like hating something yeah. and then like pouting and like being so excited to do something then refusing to do yeah. something she is borderline personality disorder and here's the thing i think monica genuinely like wants to like be better than her mom i do i i believe that i just think it's like you unless you like put the work in it's hard to like un to not be your parents part of being better is like recognizing how you are exactly the same and then heather it's i heather's really grown on me this season again and she's like i wanted to and she gives everyone like a little like jar full of pearls and pink sand pink sand which is really sweet and she's like so this is it (laughs) what (laughs) what you're moved by that i was moved i thought it was like i'm like okay heather's like Heather's a real. She's I a. Love, God, that's she's a really, good old broad. That's really sweet. It is sweet. She's like <laughs> I would have been tickled by the. I would, I love this Heather. I love it. So she's like, I want to give everyone a hint of what trip we're gonna go on next, and then Le- and then someone Lisa goes islands. Whitney goes, it's by the beach. By the beach, no. An island, and they're like, yes, it's an island, and she's like, and it's a place that has pink sand, and she's trying to get Monica to like, and Monica's, and Monica's like, like hmm. with her bonnet. And then she goes pink sand, and then Lisa goes, "It's Bermuda." Bermuda. And Heather and goes, "Yes, we're going to Bermuda." And yeah. Monica, do you want to talk about it or anything? And and Monica's like, 
mm, I'm not going. And then Heather's like, okay, you're being ridiculous. This is like supposed to be a trip that we're doing together and you're not making, you're making this not fun. And then Monica in her confession goes, I'm starting to see why Jen Shaw didn't trust Heather. I'm like, you ratted Jen Shaw out. I know. You're a dirty rat. You helped put her in jail. Yeah. You're a dirty rat, but you were also like her minion. So you are completely untrustworthy. Yeah. It's one thing to be like a villain's minion. It's another thing to be their minion. And then also air them out to the cops she's a, a rat is a rat. rat a rat is always a yeah rat. what would big Ange say big Ange would, would not be having monica she wouldn't fuck with monica she'd fuck with lisa barlow yeah and, and she'd heather. fuck with heather well because lisa's also a new yorker she probably wouldn't fuck with meredith no not Ange. i don't think, I think angie would, would have her. Her. maybe whitney but i don't know i think whitney and big Ange could get along they both like men yeah um but yeah i love whatever monica's doing i love it because it is it is unhinged but like do i enjoy her as a person absolutely not one or nowhere near me but do i respect ld and think she is the moment and mother god one hundo (laughs) one hundo do we need to track down LD's gay ex-husband Absolutely. and fly him to Salt Lake City or create a big mother-daughter girls trip to Florida? A hundred percent. Yes. Stay tuned. So let's go fund a trip for us to find him in Florida. Oh my God. To Tampa. I'll be like, I'll suck your dick. I'm going to, we on. would try and find Cuppy. Yeah. You would, you could, Work on get, you, you get blowing cuppy. him, and I'll work on getting wifed up with Cuppy. I miss Cuppy. Me too. Cu- Big Ange would love Cuppy. Cuppy was really great. Cuppy she was did too good. not get her moment. She's too good for Tampa Bay's. I know. She needs to leave Tampa. Can they like... Tampa Bay's was fun, though. Can't they reboot it? They should reboot it or bring it back for season <laughs> they two. They didn't even finish season one. They didn't? I, I think they just never finished it. They were just like, you be the... Yeah, they're like... <laughs> they're like, imagine what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I think we merged two episodes. We did. We kind of gave up. Everyone kind of gave up. It was a hard time. It was COVID. Lesbians just don't get a fair shake in this world. They don't. We stand with lesbians. But you know who does get a fair shake? Our cult members. The name them. <laughs> name them. Name them. Name them. Name them. Name them. Lucy from London. Lucy from London. Brooke Johansson. Brooke Johansson. Brittany Ryan Weiss. Weiss. Danielle McMillan. McMillan. Lady Swampwich. Gives no f- Zara. Lazara. Malzatov. Malzatov. Mary. Mary. Eliza Twaddle. Eliza Twaddle. Maisie McKinney. Maisie McKinney. Mike Earhart. Earhart. Carrie Oaks. Carrie Oaks. Sharon Baum. Realtor. Realtor. Courtney Kesselman. Kesselman. Carrie Whitmer. Whitmer. Owsley. Owsley. Mariah Kay. Mariah Kay. Kathy West. Kathy West. Rochelle Martino. Tino. Kit Moore, Kit Moore, Hillary, Hillary, Orlando, 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 Nick Sedaris, Sedaris. Emily, Emily, Kim Lucas, Kim Lucas, and Jeffrey Pradama, Pradama, Pradama. Someone in the Patreon comments goes, "What must it feel like to be Jeffrey Pradama?" I think he feels good. I think he feels great. Jeffrey he Pradama, can also, we love you. We've locked him into our mother god. He can never leave the he cult. Ha- he knows. He knows, and I like all the spellings of Pradama too. Mm-hmm. Guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a a delightful Thanksgiving. And if you're not celebrating in our country or you are in our country, just choose not to celebrate it. Have a great day. Have a great holiday. Have a great old regular nasty Thursday. Have a great old resting nasty Thursday. (laughs) (laughs) Have a nasty little Thursday. Have a piggish nasty little Thursday. Ask yourself, what would Whitney do under the desk? And have yourself that kind of Thursday. (laughs) Bye. Bye.